Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to your own Silicon Valley Tech Talks channel. This is your host, Faisal Vatu from San Jose, California. Across the past few decades, telecom industry has really revolutionized human lives in many ways. Take example of internet access. Internet access relies on underneath telecom infrastructure and services. And we all know that internet access simply doesn't mean access to information and ability to connect others, but it also means better opportunities for education, health, and business. Many companies and organizations have been working on innovation initiatives for telecom industry. Telecom Infra Project is one of them. We are fortunate to have Eugenia Jordan as our guest today. Eugenia is Chief Marketing Officer of Telecom Infra Project. Before joining Telecom Infra Project, Eugenia held executive marketing leadership roles at Parallel Wireless and Cisco. Eugenia is also an author. So without any further delay, let's go and talk to Eugenia and learn from her experiences and insights. Hello, Eugenia. Welcome to our show. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you. Awesome. So Eugenia, for uh, common people and uh, for our audience, uh, can you briefly explain Telecom Infra Project? What are the objectives and how does it function? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm the CMO for Telecom Infra Project, or TIP. And TIP is an industry organization, and we're very different than any other telecom industry organization because our mission is to ensure that open and disaggregated innovations they get tested, validated, and deployed. Our community of vendors, mobile operators, system integrators, academia, regulators is wide, and we do work across many different areas of the network. Our project groups, or we call them PGs, they work in the RAN with Open RAN. They work on optical with OPT. They also work on open Wi-Fi. You have been in the telecom industry, you know, pretty much all your career and tremendous insights, right? So let me ask you a, a broad question, like within next three to five years, what are the top trends in telecom industry you are expecting? So normally I do three things, but I'm only going to do two things. <laughs> So um, the first one is in network intelligence, AI, and it will come into telecom on two fronts. So the first one is AI will change how networks are deployed, managed, maintained. They will become more intelligent and automated. And on the second front, AI will help mobile operators make their consumer and enterprise experience more engaging, more innovative, because that is what users want. We want access everywhere, anywhere. But network engineers that build networks, they want tasks to be running easy. They want all the fixes to be done um, right. And that's why I believe the first trend AI will affect telecom on the network side and on the consumer side. The second one is silicon or chipsets. Uh, there's a lot of innovation needs to happen and is already happening to ensure that sustainability goals can be met. And especially the ones in regards to consumption, consumption, power consumption, because telecom equipment in the data center on the radio side consumes a lot of power. And that power consumption actually drives mobile operator OPEX up. So once those innovations and in chipsets are implemented, that power consumption on site or in the data center can be reduced resulting in reduction on mob in mobile operator networks TCO. Can you dive a little bit deeper on the AI and the generative AI aspects on how these can 
add value to telecom uh, telecom industry in general? Yes, absolutely. So let's just separate AI and generative AI because generative mm-hmm. AI can make all of us more productive. There is many mm-hmm. different tools on the market. Um, Chat GPT, for example, or Bard AI, or other types of gen, gen, generative AIs, they can help us make summaries of the reports. They can mm-hmm. help us do a quick research. They can help us write emails or proofread our emails. So it can they can make us more productive. On mm-hmm. the other front, the network AI um, can make networks more intelligent. So Rick, uh, Radio Intelligent Controller, it's a new, it's a function that was developed by Oran Alliance, and it brings with its functionality near real-time and non-real-time controllers, brings the functionality that is very needed in telecom. So your non-real-time controller will collect the data, will process the data, analyze the data, and then it will develop the models that will be fed into the near real-time controller so it can make decisions on the network. When the um, antennas need to be turned or when the um, radio distance needs to be increased, why? Why is it important for um, a regular user of the network? because your experience will be much better. If your throughput is higher, then your experience um, will be much better, and especially for latency-sensitive applications like Metaverse. And Metaverse, it's probably going to be the next application that will be taking off in the next year, two, three years. There's still a significant population of the world which does not have internet connection at all. And one of the primary reasons for that is cost of connectivity for for the service providers as well as for the consumers. So how can we solve this challenge? So on two fronts, there are technologies, unlicensed spectrum technologies, like, for example, TIP is working on open Wi-Fi technology that can be brought to those underserved areas at much lower cost. Because it's when we look at connecting the unconnected, it's not just the cost of building the network and then getting the return on that investment. That can be solved. It's also the cost of the device um, and also the cost of... um, paying for those services on a monthly or bi-monthly or yearly basis. So it needs to be addressed on all those fronts. Can I build a network? What it's going to cost me? Because the equipment might be available that will be cheaper, easier to install with AI and so on. The second one is how can my end users afford the devices? and maybe giving loans or uh, payment plans and so on. Because what in in my career, what I noticed when in those underserved areas, when you give people in those areas, devices, an opportunity to connect, build businesses or experience healthcare, mobile healthcare, other types of mobile services, the wealth increases. And I remember four or five years ago, I was with MTN, and one of the executives said about Africa that prosperous Africa is not only good for Africa, but it's good for the world. So prosperous Latin America, prosperous Asia is good for the world. And that's why I'm so excited to be in telecom, because we connect the world. Awesome. Thank you. That's great, Eugenia. Um, so today, we don't have a lot of female leaders in tech industry, especially in telecom. What advice you will give to young girls who are considering careers in tech? Oh, that's my favorite question, as you know. So I'm going to go here. 
the advice is in this book. So it's called Unlimited by Eugenia Jordan. And mm-hmm. I just actually published it in in June of this year. So it's 17 proven laws, how we under underrepresented women or immigrants, um, we can succeed in this world. So my advice is threefold. Number one is control your own destiny. You're responsible for your own career. Find the right mentors, find the right sponsors, work on your skills, make those skills valuable. The second one is build your support circle and build your network. Don't wait until you mid career, start building your network now. And then the last one is when you have a seat at the table, though you might have been the first one, don't be the last one. Very insightful. Thank you so much, Regina, for joining our show. I'm sure our audience would benefit a lot from your insights. Thank you for having me.